All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host Chuck Stevenson coming at you today with a special fight review. We're going to UFC Vegas 39. We're going to the main event in the strawweight division. Fourth ranked Mackenzie Dern coming in at 11 and 1, taking on sixth ranked Marina Rodriguez coming in at 14, 1 and 2. Big fight in the strawweight division, very pivotal for uh, potential title implications. So let's get into it. So first round, uh, Rodriguez, you know, she did her best to stay on the outside, used her uh, her height and reach to keep Dern at range. Uh, Dern would rush forward with punches to get Rodriguez to the fence. And then uh, Dern had a hold of one of Rodriguez's legs, and Rodriguez basically grabbed Dern's other arm and pulled her up into like almost like a standing crucifix and used that as her takedown defense until she was able to uh, break the clinch where she continued to pick Dern apart at range. Now for the second round, uh, Dern twice was able to close early with strikes to the clinch. On her second attempt, she hip-tossed Rodriguez, um, who somewhat defended, but Dern was able to latch onto a leg, bringing, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> bringing her down onto the ground. Uh, the rest of the round, from then on, it was almost all Dern on top. Um, Rodriguez, you know, she defended with the, I want to say it was a Darce choke, I could be wrong on it, but she defended with a choke from the bottom for a bit, but she was uh, forced to let it go eventually, and uh, Dern escaped and continued to control from the turtle position. Uh, she tried an unorthodox arm bar from the turtle position using her, basically like used her arms to try to stretch the arm out, and then she took the back and tried pounding from mount. Um, and one thing I want to note here, and I might bring this up again later, you know, when Dern couldn't finish Rodriguez on the ground, she went back to her corner and she just had this like little bit of like a lost look on her face. But uh, I might come back to that later. Anyway, moving on to the third round. This one was a strong, strong Rodriguez round. Uh, she used punching combinations from outside and also utilized kicks to keep Dern from coming forward. Um, she had a nice use of oblique kicks to Dern's lead, lead leg too. Uh, very smart to take, try to take out the lead leg of someone who was so heavy on her front leg to uh, strike. Now Dern did get to the clinch in the final 30 seconds, but as soon as she did, Rodriguez just punished her with punches and elbows. So, once again, uh, Marina Rodriguez coming out strong with the round. Moving into the fourth round, uh, Dern, she came forward more to start, like started getting more aggressive, but Rodriguez was able to shut her down. Uh, she continued to build on the work from round three. Now, Rodriguez also started finding the clinch and started landing some knees to Dern's head. Now, with about 40 seconds left, um, Rodriguez tried to throw... Uh, Dern off from a clinch attempt, but what that did was uh, like it created like a like a bit of a scramble. It's kind of sloppy, and it allowed Dern to pull her down, and Dern was able to get straight to mount. And Rodriguez spent the rest of the round like a little less than 40 seconds uh, with Dern mounted on her, and uh, Dern was trying to land some ground and pound to get it finished, but she wasn't able to. So we went to the fifth and final round. Of the main event uh, with and you know Dern her coaches must have told her like you know you're down you, you're down they must have told her because she came out she started desperately rushing forward a few times at the start and uh, you could tell she was desperate to close um, now Rodriguez though she she ducked and you know walked away kind of like fast walked away to avoid you know utilized her her head movement and footwork um, you know, the fifth round, this was the best we saw of Marina Rodriguez's jab. She started using it more often to set up her combinations. She'd, she'd pump it out more and use it to set up her combinations. Now, Dern did get to the clinch in the final 30 seconds, but Rodriguez kept her from doing anything with it. So basically, fifth round was much like the fourth, um, all Marina Rodriguez. So fight ended and it went to the judges and all three judges saw it 49 46 for the winner by unanimous decision marina rodriguez 
you know, this was a bit of a levels defining fight. You know, every fighter comes to one of these fights in their career where you discover that there are levels to certain things. And I mean, I, it, it's like an overused trope at this point, you know, when you hear people say, well, there's levels to this. It's a trope because it there is some truth to it. And this is where Mackenzie Dern reached, you know, basically the level that she's able to based on what she has available to her right now. Um, you know, I want to go back to uh, between the second and third round. And you could tell that Dern kind of realized it when she couldn't finish Rodriguez on the ground. I mean, she spent like close to four minutes with Rodriguez on the ground and could not finish her. You know, hats off to Marina Rodriguez for that excellent submission defense from her on the, on the ground. And, you know, Dern went back to her corner after that and, you know, her, her corner even like had to like get her attention like hey are you here with me and she she went yeah yeah but you could tell that she was like in that space where she knew like man i might be in over my head here or not even might but i'm definitely in over my head here so definitely a levels defining fight here now one thing i liked from uh rodriguez you know i mentioned it earlier she started using that oblique kick to um attack the lead leg of Dern and the way Rodriguez does it, like she really puts some force behind it. Like she really puts some force behind that oblique kick. You know, a lot of people you see, like um, I was listening to the Jack Slack podcast yesterday, and he mentioned, you know, like Jones and Holm, they'll they'll use it, but they're not, but they're doing it from like way out. They're almost like standing back to use it just to like keep distance. Whereas like the way Rodriguez was using it, she was really putting some like oomph into it. A very nice use of that. Really smart, too, because the way Duran strikes, you know, she's coming forward so heavy, you know, throwing these big punches to, to close very heavy on her lead leg. So the more you do that, the more you're taking away a big weapon of Dern. So very smart use of that by Rodriguez. Uh, you know, this is one of those fights where it came down to, you know, each fighter trying to implement their best game. And honestly, Dern... She largely failed to implement hers, and whereas Rodriguez was able to implement her game for, what, almost every round other than the second and a little bit of the of the third round, but Dern just couldn't get Rodriguez down to the ground, which is a big deficit in her game that I don't think I really even realized until like a day or so before the fight, and um... Last note I have here, you know, Rodriguez, she's showing signs of being a serious title contender now. She's definitely in that title mix now, whereas Dern, she's going to have to, you know, go back to the drawing board here. But uh, anyway, let's get into things to work on. For Marina Rodriguez, you know, she still needs to work on her defensive grappling. And uh, that sounds kind of silly, considering that she just was able to survive on the ground with um, Mackenzie Dern. But something I'd like to see her do more you know she she when she's on the ground she likes to stay on her back and work the close guard but she's got to start opening her guard more and looking for sweeps and to create scrambles to uh, get back up to her feet now for Dern you know I got to give Jason Perillo her coach a lot of credit he, he's a good coach uh, he's coached Cyborg he's coached Michael Bisping and he has done all that he can do with Dern based on what she already has available but now it's time for her to work on things um, particularly like absolute basics like he needs to take her back to basics right now uh, biggest thing she needs to find a wrestling club to work for her takedowns like not like a school team or anything but there are these things called wrestling clubs where you can go and it's just nothing but it's like serious competitive wrestlers that are invited to these clubs and I'm sure they'd like to have heard one of them would welcome her you know find a good wrestling club to work on her takedowns because she basically has none she came into this fight with a 10 percent takedown percentage in the UFC so she's got to work on ways to get her opponents down to the ground other than just you know absolute craziness or opponents willing to 
follow her to the ground. The time for that is over at this level. She's got to find ways to get her opponents to the ground. And working on her wrestling is only going to help her with that. Also, she needs to really work on her striking fundamentals. Possibly find a good boxing club with coaches that are used to working with beginners on that. Okay, When I say fundamentals, I'm talking footwork. She has none. Head movement. Again, she has none. And a jab. Jab, jab, jab. She has like no jab. She's just trying to throw out, you know, a big heavy right hand. And then she'll like follow it up with the left. These are like the three most basic things that you would learn on day one in a boxing gym. They're going to have you in front of a mirror, not even, you know, putting on gloves. They're going to have you in front of a mirror, just working on your footwork, your head movement, and throwing out the jab, shadow boxing. And that's really what she needs to spend a lot of time doing. And all of those things, if she works on them, are going to help her to properly set up that right hand bomb that she has. Because Dern does hit hard when she lands. It's just a matter of it actually landing. So if she works on those fundamentals, she'll be able to better, more properly deliver it as she comes forward. Now for fights to make, for Mackenzie Dern, I'd like to see her fight either Claudia Gadelia or Tisha Torres. You know, she needs to step back right now. She was in the top five and now she'll be out of it. So she needs to step back in fighting someone from that six to ten level. Uh, Gadelia would be a good test. I mean, <coughs> excuse me. You know, poor Claudia, she's, she's on a downtrend, whereas Torres seems to have found, you know, like a second wind in her career. So either one of them will be, would be a good test because Gadelia is not going to go to the ground too easy. Neither is Torres. So both are going to test, you know, her takedowns and her striking. Now for Rodriguez. Well, I believe she called out Joanna Janjacek in her post-fight interview, but also said if she'd be willing to take it because, you know, uh, Joe Jed, she's not really too keen on fighting anyone other than the top two right now. But that seems to be the fight that everyone wants to see, and it's a fight that I'd like to see. But if Joanna won't, won't take it, I'd like to see another striking battle between her and and Yan Xiaonan. That would be a good, exciting fight too for two fighters that love to come forward. So either of those two would be good. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this strawweight main event. Let me know your thoughts on the fight in the comments down below. If you liked the video, please give it a like. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to WMMAC Now, the most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.